The science fiction fantasy comedy that is known as Cocoon was released in 1985 and directed by Ron Howard. It tells the story of a group of elderly people from a retirement home who find a swimming pool full of weird rocks. And this pool may just be the fountain of youth, as it gives rejuvenating energy and a new fresh appreciation of life to the elderly people who swim in it. The rocks, however, are alien cocoons from the planet Antaria where fellow alien Antarians have arrived on Earth to save the cocoons. And the alien survival relies on Steve Guttenberg driving a boat in this classic feel-good 1980s fantasy. So today we're going to feel a little younger and a little bit more full of life as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Cocoon. So less waffling and more 10 things you didn't know as we check it out. Number 10, based on a book. Cocoon is indeed based off a book, also called Cocoon, which was written by author David Saperstein. The book is actually the first chapter in a trilogy, with two book sequels that followed, including Metamorphosis and Butterfly. Now, I haven't read the book, but it's got pretty good reviews online. From what I have read, the book has many similarities with the movie, but also lots of differences too. One of which being the book didn't feature any interstellar romances between human and alien creatures. The book was released in the same year that the movie came out, 1985, and it was successful and had become a New York Times bestseller, and considered a pioneer in science fiction storytelling. So it didn't take long for Hollywood to come a knocking for this one! Number 9, the original director was fired. Cocoon's movie adaptation was picked up by 20th Century Fox and was further picked up by producers Richard Zanuck and David Brown, along with their Zanuck Brown company, whom previously produced another water-based movie, that of course being Jaws. Director Robert Zemeckis was hired as director. At that stage, he had only directed the comedies I Wanna Hold Your Hand and Used Cars, both of which were flops but 20th Century Fox decided to take a chance with him anyway. During the early production of Cocoon, Zemeckis took time off to direct Romancing the Stone, and when 20th Century Fox saw Romancing the Stone, they disliked it so much, they removed Zemeckis from the Cocoon project, despite Romancing the Stone going on to be a huge success, and replaced him with Ron Howard, whom at the time was fresh off the hills from the romantic comedy Splash. So Howard was now in charge of bringing to life this fountain of youth alien tale. But I'm sure it didn't upset Robert Zemeckis too much, as he would go on to direct Back to the Future, and, well, the rest was history. Yeah, I don't think he was shedding many tears for Cocoon. Number 8, Casting Possibilities. So when it came to the movie's sort of main lead, Jack, the down-on-his-luck character who decides to help the Antarians and even falls in love with one of them, gee, what an interesting therapy session that'll turn out to be, an actor who auditioned for the part was none other than Nicolas Cage. But evidently he wasn't cast. But it's not all bad, as like Robert Zemeckis, he would go on to have other pastures, where the following year he starred in Peggy Sue Got Married. The production instead went with Steve Guttenberg, whom had just starred in the goofball comedy Police Academy, making his cocoon role switch a more down-to-earth performance than the wacky comical Average Man. In order to star in Cocoon, Guttenberg had to take a lower pay compared to what his usual fee was at that time. But he didn't really care as he loved the script and really wanted to work on the movie and with Ron Howard. Number 7, Location Filming. So of course it goes without saying that Cocoon was filmed on location at St. Petersburg, Florida, capturing some great Florida scenery. Watching this movie as a kid always made me want to visit the state, as it looks so fun and happy. It always looked like a fun holiday. 
However, someone who may have had too much of a holiday there was Cocoon co-star Brian Dennehy, who played Walter, an alien in disguise who was trying to save the Ontarian cocoons. According to IMDb, during the movie's shoot, the actor was pulled over after a night on the town with Steve Guttenberg and was arrested for driving under the influence. However, there seems to be conflicting reports, as according to 80skids.com, it was Gutenberg who was pulled over and Dennehy was the passenger in the car. So who knows? Either way, it must have been a pretty epic night on the town. Number 6. A Matter of Age Another important character in Cocoon is that of Ben, one of the elderly men who discovers the rejuvenating swimming pool and wreaks its benefits. The part was played by Wilford Brimley, who a few years earlier met a different kind of alien in The Thing. Now you see, here's the catch. Brimley was playing an elderly character, but was only 49 at the time, so he was aged up with makeup and by dyeing his hair white. He did celebrate his 50th during the movie's shoot, but yeah, 49 years old and in a retirement home. Man, that's just 10 years older than me. Ron Howard said that during the making of Cocoon, the elderly cast would often have philosophical debates over whether or not they would choose immortality like seen in the movie, and some of them were really excited and really for the idea, but some of them were actually really against it. I guess it all depends on whether or not you've seen Highlander. Number 5. An Extra Was Knocked Out so as anyone who's familiar with my show would know, on-set accidents and injuries are sadly a common occurrence when it comes to filmmaking, and Cocoon was no exception. And it's all down to actor Hume Cronin, who played Joe. Now, in his younger years, before he was an actor, Cronin was a boxer, one who lost his eye along the way. Cut to Cocoon, and there's a scene where the Joe character goes on a bit of a rampage at the retirement home and punches the orderlies. In order to film that scene, Cronin was told just to pretend to punch them, you know, give them a movie punch, where you go to hit them, but don't really hit them. But due to his short-sightedness from only having one eye, he actually punched one of the extras playing the orderlies, and knocked him out cold. Wow! So despite being about 74 at the time, I guess he still had one mean punch. Yeah, no messing with that guy. Number 4, The Music of Cocoon. The score for Cocoon was composed by the legendary James Horner, who during the 90s would go on to have great success with movies like Braveheart and Titanic. Interestingly, the same year he scored Cocoon, he also scored the Arnold Schwarzenegger action romp Commando. <laughs> wow, what a contrast. This was also the start of a working relationship with Ron Howard, as he would go on to score Willow, Apollo 13, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and A Beautiful Mind. However, over the years, many eagle-eyed viewers, or in this case, eagle-eared viewers, have noticed that some of the music in Cocoon sounds very similar to some of the music he previously scored for Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, suggesting that he may have recycled some musical cues that he previously scored for that movie. Meh, he wouldn't be the first. Many composers have actually done that, some of the greats. Either way, the Cocoon score is still a great score that suits the movie. Number 3. Family Relations So it seemed that when Ron Howard sat in the director's chair for Cocoon, he really reached out to his family for support. Literally, as several members of the Howard family appear in Cocoon, including Clint, his brother, who always seems to play weirdo roles, doesn't he? His father Rance, his mother Jean, and his wife Cheryl. Apparently, even his sister shows up in Cocoon, making the movie a true Howard family reunion. There were so many Howards, I'm surprised Scott Howard didn't show up, along with Howard the Duck. My cringy jokes aside, although this story might be a warm and gooey one, just like Cocoon itself, you want to know what isn't so warm and gooey? The movie's Russian movie poster. Just look at this! That's terrifying! Those eyes are eating my soul and putting me off cheese pizza. Ugh! No more! Make it stop! Quick, go to number two! Thank you! Number two, sequel. So giving what a success Cocoon was, more on that shortly, there was indeed a sequel with Cocoon The Return, which came out several years later in 1988. 
Ron Howard didn't return though. Instead, the picture was directed by Canadian director Daniel Petrie. But despite this, most of the cast did return, along with composer James Horner and producers Zanuck and Brown. However, Cocoon the Return didn't live up to the glory of its original, and sadly, lightning didn't strike twice. It tanked in the box office, and I think that people thought that it didn't really add anything, and was just an unnecessary rehash. Now I can remember being a kid, and one night on TV there was a Cocoon Marathon, with both movies being broadcast back to back on the same night. And I had to fight through tiredness, a migraine, and nagging parents who wanted me to go to bed. But I got through both movies, and I absolutely loved the second one. Yeah, my 7 year old self thought it was great. So who knows, maybe the critics were too harsh, or I was just a silly kid. Let me know in the comments. Number 1. Six Highest Grossing Movie of 1985 Cocoon opened up in June 1985 and would make over $85 million on a $17.5 million budget, making it a box office hit, further making Cocoon the as mentioned sixth highest grossing movie of that year. The movie also got great praise from critics, who appreciated Ron Howard's directing and ability to keep interest flowing within his storytelling, along with the tale of elderly people finding their spark in life with a modern science fiction twist. Cocoon would also go on to win two Academy Awards, including Best Visual Effects. So for its time, Cocoon was a grand victory, yeah! I can remember seeing Cocoon for the first time when I was a kid, and I actually found it quite terrifying. I thought the aliens looked really creepy, and I was disturbed over the visual of aliens taking off their human skin. But Cocoon, the original, is a movie that I've really come to appreciate the older that I get. It's actually a really kind and sweet movie, with an earnest sentimentality. Through watching Cocoon, the movie can give us all a newfound, rejuvenated glow in life. I think it's time to dust off the old DVDs and VHSs and watch Cocoon again. It keeps up with the friendly alien trope seen in E.T. and Close Encounters, but it does something new and different with it, creating actually a very human story. Anyway, I'm Minty. And seriously, man, those eyes. Ew. See ya.